Hello and welcome to the Lady Dynamite Creates. I have some very exciting news. My husband just got a new job at Riot Games. And so to celebrate, I decided I was going to make a character from League of Legends. Since my husband's favorite character is Evelyn, I decided she would be the perfect candidate. So enough talking, let's get started. When I first started looking at the concept art and game model for Evelyn, I decided that Gulia, Venus, or Clea would probably be my best bets. Gulia and Venus both have very similar jaw shapes to what Evelyn has. But the thing that I really liked about this Cleo was she has a very distinct bridge of her nose and uh, brow area that really matched up with what I'm seeing with the Evelyn concept and model. So that's the one that I decided to go with. I knew no matter which way I looked, I was going to have to change her skin tone at least a little bit anyways. I prepped her like I always do by shaving down her hair really short, and then I pop her into some boiled water and let her sit for a couple of minutes so her plastic gets soft, and then I can remove her head. With a flathead screwdriver, I scrape all the plugs out of her head, and then I pull them all out of her neck hole with some needle nose pliers. Once all of that nasty gunk is gone, I take 100% acetone and remove all of her factory paint. Now you notice the area where her part and bangs had started on the doll has a bit of a hole there now once we removed all the plugs. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I take a little bit of needle and thread and I start stitching away that area just to make sure that I've got it nice and tight so that when I am rerouting, because I'm going to still be using these same holes, I'm running less of a risk of splitting the scalp. And I use my pliers to help me push the needle through the vinyl. Sometimes that can get a little tough. Once I'm happy with the stitching, I go ahead and tie my string off, and then I do a thin coat of Liquid Fusion glue just over the top. Now before I can reroute her, I do need to give her head a coat of paint, so I match up some that's pretty close to the hair color I've chosen. And this just helps so that if there are thinner areas of the reroute, it's just not as noticeable. The hair that I'm using is from the Doll Planet hair, and it is in the color of Comet Dust. To prep the hair, I cut it in half. This way, I get the hair at the right length, which is around the middle of her back. To reroute, I pick up a small plug-sized piece, which is about 8 to 10 hairs, and then I loop that around my finger. I now slide the tool underneath and pick up all of the hair, and then I tighten that loop onto the tip of the tool. Then I just plug it into the head. I make sure to keep the tip of my tool perpendicular to the hairline, this way, I don't accidentally go into two holes with each prong and rip the hole. This prevents you from getting split scalps. Now, I'm going to show you a little diagram of how I rerouted her part line and her bangs because it was a little difficult to show on camera, but what I did is I have this kind of upside down Y shape, and I first root down the area of the bangs, and I pulled those hairs towards the middle. Those are the bangs. Then I again root down those same holes, and I pull those out towards the rest of the hair. Then I just reroute down the part line like I normally do, going down the same holes, pulling one side left, one side right. Once she's fully rerouted, I separate all of the sections of her hair out to her bangs and her victory roll sections. Then I use a little bit of liquid fusion glue and I set all those plugs in place. Now let's move on to her clothes. I start with a jacket and I'm taking their front panels and she has these little insets and I'm connecting those insets to the front panel. Once those are sewn in, I take a little bit of fabric fusion glue and I apply that to the seam. I want these seams to lie nice and flat, so I'm using a little bit of heat from my flat iron to help set the glue and keep it nice and crisp. I sew the insets into the back panel, and then I use that same treatment to set those as well. I add a decorative top stitch to all of the inset panels. I sew the front panels to the back at the shoulder seam. I sew the two collar pieces together, and then I trim off all the excess.
I flip the collar right side out and I use a tool to push out the corners to make sure they're nice and crisp. On the inside of the collar, I use a little bit of fabric fusion down towards the seam and then I hit it with a little bit of heat from the flat iron and this helps set the shape of the collar. To attach the collar, I find the center point on the collar itself and the center point of the jacket neck hole. Then I, I pin those down and sew it in place. I fold the cuffs and attach them to the sleeves. Then I add a gathering stitch to the top of the sleeve. I tie off one side of the gathering strings and cut that short. Then on the other end, I gently pull on one side and this just helps to gather the fabric up and give the jacket the puffed appearance in the sleeve area. Once I'm happy with the gathers, I start pinning it into place in the armhole and then I sew it down. Now that most of the jacket is constructed, I can go ahead and sew up those side seams and armholes. So I flip it so that right sides are facing, and then I pin it all in place and sew down the arms and the side seam. To add the bottom band to the jacket, I take a long strip of fabric and I fold it in half. I then sew up those two side seams, and give it the same treatment I gave the collar. Once it's ready, I can attach it to the bottom of the jacket with right side spacing, pin it in place, and sew it down. Then the jacket's done, and I have to say I really love how this jacket came out. This was my second try on it, and it's just so cute! For the skirt, I need to make a pattern, and to do this, I wrap my mannequin doll up in some cling wrap, and then using a little bit of paper tape, I go over that. Once she's all wrapped up, I can start sketching in the design. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get the basic shape of the skirt that I want, and once I'm happy with that and with all of its seams, I can go start adding its details, and the first thing I do is add the waistband and the side panel that's going to be sheer. Once I feel like that works, I go ahead and cut it off and I'm going to convert this into a paper pattern. Once I have all of those pieces cut out and trimmed, I can start transferring them to paper and I just trace around them. And once I've got them traced, I add seam allowances and I true up any of my curves. With the right sides facing, I sew the back panel to the front panel. I top stitch the hip panel to a piece of tulle. I pin this onto the doll, making sure to keep in mind where my seam lines are going to fall. Next, I pin the front panel on, and I make sure that I keep the sheer inset in the proper placement. Once everything is securely pinned in place, I can remove it from the doll and then top stitch that down. Then I cut away any of the excess fabric. With right sides facing, I sew together the top seams of the waistband. I trim the excess and turn it right side out and then attach it to the top of the skirt. Finally, I pin this onto the doll marking where the center back seam should be. I then sew up the back leaving space that her butt can still get through and then add a hook and eye closure. For the lace-up details on the skirt, I decided to go with a little bit of heat transfer vinyl. 
I've laid the skirt out flat and then using transfer film, I sketched out the shape of the sheer opening. Then I have taken little bitty strips of the heat transfer vinyl and I'm laying them down into the Xing crossing pattern and then just attaching them to that. Once I'm happy with the design, I go ahead and lay that onto the skirt and using my flat iron, I heat set it. I use parchment paper to help protect the faux leather fabric so that I don't scorch it. The final thing for the skirt is to add the zipper details and I just paint this on with some flexible acrylic paints. And then I sew on a jump ring to look like the zipper pull. The bra wound up being a much more arduous task than I was originally expecting, but that was my own fault because I really wanted to keep those sheer panels. It quickly became apparent I was not going to be able to do this with just fabric, so I wound up pulling out the warbler. I wrapped my mannequin up with some cling wrap and I just heated up the warbler and applied it to her chest, and then I just shaped out to get a nice contour. Once I'm happy with the fit, I start sketching out the design of what the bra is going to look like. Once I'm happy, I pop it off and I just cut it out. I give it a couple of coats of black acrylic paint. Once the paint is dry, I yet again wrap my mannequin up with some clean wrap, but this time I add a layer of tulle on top. I apply a little bit of super glue to the inside of the bra and then I push it onto the chest attaching the tool to the bra. I give it a squirt of InstaSet and this just helps the super glue to dry even quicker. Trim off any of the excess tool and I have my nice sheer insets now. Now to add the harness portion of the bra. I apply thin ribbon to the top edge of each cup, just super gluing those down and trimming off any excess. I use a lighter to heat seal any of the exposed edges of the ribbon. Be aware though, this only works with synthetic ribbon. Let's hear it for the MVP of this bra, the super glue, and the mini fingertips of mine that it glued down along the way. For the center of the harness, I loop a piece of ribbon through a jump ring and then tack that down with a little bit of glue. I then glue that to the center of the bra. I add the top jump ring to that center harness and then tack that in place as well. The harness was a lot of trial and error and I did have to take this apart several times just readjusting different lengths of things because you get a couple of millimeters off here and there with doll scale, it winds up being a whole lot. I periodically check the fit on the doll, just laying it on there and checking to make sure that the lengths of everything is good. From that top jump ring that we just made, I go ahead and add two more ribbons coming off, one going to the right, one going to the left. I then take a piece of ribbon and I run it up the side of the bra and bring it up to that point and let it meet but not connect yet. Now where both of those ribbons meet, we're going to be attaching a jump ring, so just slide both ribbons through the jump ring and attach.
Then in those jump rings, we are going to attach ribbons that are going to meet at the neck. So attach those and then try it onto the doll and do a quick mark of where those are crossing yet because we're going to glue the neck ribbon there at that point. Once marked, glue them together and then trim off the excess. Finally, add the ribbon that goes around the neck. For the back, I use a little bit thicker ribbon. One side is going to have a jump ring attached to it and the other side is going to have a hook. For the side with the hook, I trim the ribbon down to where it just meets at the edge of the jump ring. And then I heat seal the edge and sew the hook in place. Then when you fasten it onto the doll, the hook just grabs a hold of the jump ring and secures it. For the face up, I use various brands of watercolor pencils, along with some Rembrandt pastels, pan pastels, gouache, Derwent metallic watercolors, and some mica powder. The first thing I need to do is correct the skin tone. So after she's been prepped with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear, I start applying a lighter pan pastel onto her to lighten up Cleo's skin. Evelyn has a very pale skin tone and Cleo is pretty tan. You'll notice me using a razor blade right here, and apparently when I had sprayed one of the layers of Mr. Super Clear, I had a piece of dust settle onto the eye. So just using that edge of the X-Acto blade, I flick and gently remove it. After three layers of pan pastels, I'm ready to start the face up, and the first thing I start doing is just defining out the eye shape. And I am keeping reference of Evelyn pulled up the whole time I'm working on this so that I can more closely match the eye shapes. When I'm satisfied with her eye shape and I am convinced that they match, I go ahead and start shading out her face. And I actually bought some new pastels this time around. I was really tired of mixing all of my pan pastels, so I did get a set of the Skin Tone Rembrandt sticks. And I have to say, I really like it. Uh, there's a wide variety of colors and it's not too expensive. Granted, they are a little harder, so you have to scrape off your own, but they're very beautiful colors. So after I'm satisfied with my first pass of contouring, I go ahead and give a light dusting of mauve to the cheeks and apply some pink pastel to the lips. I apply her eyeshadow colors in a light turquoise and some gray. Then I do some light blending with a Q-tip. So the final thing I do on layer one is some highlighting and I take my pastel pencil, highlight the center of the eyelid around the teardrops and on the bow of her lips. Then I go in with some pastel powder and highlight the T-zone and the apples of her cheeks. Layer two is where I really start kicking up my colors. I use a very saturated bright turquoise around the corners of the eyes so that there is a fade to it and then start smoking out around that with some gray and defining the eyelid crease. With a darker red, I detail around her lips some, and this is just pulling out the bitten look, so I am making the center of the mouth a little bit pinker, and then I'm taking a brown and darkening up the lip line where the lips meet. And for this, I'm pulling the brown directly off the pencil, so I'm using a wet brush to apply this. This just allows me to get into that crease a little bit better. To define the waterline, I first go in with a lighter pale pink, and once I filled that in, I go in with a darker red towards the corners of the eyes. Using a white pastel pencil, I fill in the whites of the eyes. I add in some green mica powder, and while I don't show this, I do add this on every layer, but Mr. Super Clear really dulls down the mica powder, so it's necessary if you want it to really shimmer and pop to add multiple layers of this. With a little bit of gray pastel, I sketch out the eyebrow shape. 
And it takes a few tries to get right, but I use an eraser to refine the shape even better, and then I go ahead and match the other side to this one. Evelyn's makeup look has a little bit of pinkness right under the eyes, so I take and apply a light amount of pastel there. I use a dark brown pencil to outline the outer edge of the waterline, and then I darken up the eyeliner with a black. With the start of layer 3, I'm going to start working on her irises. I sketch out the iris shape and the pupil placement, and once I'm satisfied with that, I start filling in and basing out my colors. I apply a shading effect to the iris so that it's darker at the top, as well as some striations of color into the iris itself. Take a moment to start adding in some individual hairs to her eyebrows, and then I'm going to take a look at the eyes again, because I decided I really just didn't like them. I feel like I made them just a little bit too big, so I start going in and trying to just correct a little bit and cover up some areas and erase. I managed to pull one of the eyes back, but one of them just, it just never looked right, so I just went ahead and erased it with a wet q-tip and just completely redid it and matched it to the other one. Once I was finally happy with both eyes, I go ahead and add in a little bit of gold metallic watercolor, and this is just going to give her eyes some pop. On this layer, all I really do is to find the upper and lower lashes. I'm just notorious for having to erase, so I kept them to a layer all themselves this time around because I had had enough frustration this doll already. <laughs> Finally, our last layer, layer 5, and really this layer is just about all of the highlights, and I'm using a little bit of white gouache, and I'm adding some white highlights along the tear duct and waterline. I add in her catch lights to both eyes, and then I take the time to add in a few flicks of white into her brows, just giving slight highlight there, and then highlight the very tops of all of her lashes. And now her face up's done. I have to say I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Now that her face up's done, I do need to go ahead and start matching the body to the face. So. First thing I do is give the body a nice sanding down, then I apply several layers of Mr. Super Clear and start dusting on some pan pastels. And I do believe I did three layers of these pan pastels and then started doing more layers of just the contouring of the body. Now that her face is done, we can go ahead and pull her hair out of that burrito and style her hair. I have her hair sectioned out to her bangs and the two pieces that will be her victory rolls. And the first thing I do is comb the bangs flat and start trimming those away. I trim a little bit at a time because you can always trim more, but you can't have more hair grow. I have noticed that when you cut doll hair, you have to be very aware of the angle your scissors are at. Because I would frequently have the scissors angled up and then there would be stray hair still hanging out. So I'd have to make sure that I angled these scissors away from the doll's face to really cut under that under edge. Once I'm satisfied with her bangs, I can start on her victory rolls. To do this, I take one of the side sections and I pull it back and just make sure it's very flat and at a nice angle and apply a rubber band to the tip of the hair. And I pull that rubber band till it is as, as close to the tip as I can get it. I then take that tip of the rubber band and roll it into a curl. And I keep curling that until it gets all the way flush against the top of her head. Then I take a straight pin and stick it down into the rubber band and this will hold it in place. I do a spritz of hairspray to keep it there while I set the other side. Once both sides are in place, I can secure it a little bit better. I take a needle with some thread in a similar color to that of the hair and I plug it up through the neck hole and make it pop out the top of the head. I then take and I loop this over the hair and just sew this hair into place in several different sections.
be very careful while you're working with it not to pull hair up from the bottom part and get it tangled in with your string because it can create a big mess and periodically I will get flyaway stray hairs and I just take my scissors and I clip those off really short so that they're no longer up in the way. Then once I'm satisfied with the hold, I go ahead and push it back down through the top of the head and tie this off. When everything has been secured in place, I go ahead and give it another spray of hairspray. And I do make sure that anytime I am spraying hairspray, I am protecting the doll's face so that nothing gets on there. You just never know how hairspray will react with a sealant. Evelyn, of course, needs her lashers, so I've made a pattern and I'm going to cut it first out of this holographic fabric. Then I take a thin strip of brass and I lay on top of this and then I'm going to add some double-sided interfacing and then finally the last layer is going to be the layer of black pleather. The brass is going to help us later with posing as well as points of attachment. With the help of my iron, I heat set those together. I trim away the excess black pleather and then now we have a basic shape ready. Then to mimic the seam lines that you see on Evelyn's lashers, I'm going to be adding some thin strips of decorative ribbon. I did try to sew these details first, but they look like hot garbage, so I trashed that idea. I modeled Evelyn's lasher tips in 3D and printed them, and I paint the gemstone in it with a color shifting paint. While I wait on that to dry, I'm going to finalize the fabric tips of the lashers, and I did design them to have this little inset in them so the fabric could slide down in it and be glued in place. I sketch out the shape of the inset and cut away the excess fabric. And then I go ahead and test that fit, and it's perfect. With some masking tape, I mask off the gem and then spray the lashers with some silver spray paint. I prefer doing silver spray paint over craft acrylics when I can use them because I feel like it just has a better metallic quality. To give the lasher tip some dimension, I give it a wash with black and then wipe away any excess with a rag. I had so many issues with my printers during this project. I really was just dreading every time I had to get it out for something. I just kept having failed prints on one of my printers and couldn't figure out what it was. Well, my screen was going out. But on the plus side, I now have my screen replaced in my smaller one and it is up and running and working beautifully. Now that the paint has dried on my lasher tips, I'm going to go ahead and attach these to the fabric portions. I use a little bit of super glue down into the cavity and then I just slide the fabric portions in and voila! I super glue the spikes to the top side of the lashers as well. Originally, I thought I was going to attach the lashers to the back of the jacket, and I quickly figured out that was just not going to work. So instead, what I decided to do was I was going to add a screw and nut combo. And to do this, I drill a hole in the back that's going to fit the nut. Now a screw will just run in through the holes at the top of the lashers that I've drilled and screw into her back. And once I have the cavity thoroughly dug out, I'm going to add a little bit of this friendly plastic in there and all you do with this is you heat it up in a cup of hot water and it turns it pliable. And I'm just going to poke this down so that the nut has a place to rest on. To secure the nut, I place it into the back and then mix up a little bit of JB Weld Instant Setting 1 Minute Epoxy. I make sure to squeeze this out in equal amounts and mix it up thoroughly, otherwise it will not set. Apply a light amount, just going around the edge of the bolt and up onto the side, and this secures it in place. For Evelyn's claws, I modeled some hands with claws attached to the fingers already. I saw these in half because I plan to attach them to her original hands so that she retains her articulation in her wrist. I also saw her original hands in half too. Then using a teeny tiny little drill bit, I drill a hole into the bottom of the printed hand. 
We're going to put a piece of wire in here to make sure we get a good connection between the two pieces. I use a little bit of super glue and secure one end of the wire in place. I then drill another hole into the original hand and I make sure that I'm not drilling too deep because I don't want to damage that articulation of the wrist. When I'm satisfied with the fit, I go ahead and apply a liberal amount of super glue and attach those two pieces together. Now that both of our hands are together, we are left with some pretty ugly seam lines. So to fix that, I'm going to take a little bit of UV resin and I'm going to apply that all around the seam. Not really caring if it bubbles up too big because we're going to sand it down later, but we do want to make sure that we're not getting it on any of our joints so that they still function. I use a UV flashlight to give it an initial set before I put it into the cure station. Once it's all nice and cured, I bust out the Dremel and I just start sanding all that down. I just want to make sure that my hand is all nice and smooth and there are no rough or bubbling edges. Once all the sanding's done, I can start getting a flesh tone painted onto the hand portion. I found this really great tutorial that talks about mixing paint to make a skin tone and just how to pull it more blue, more red, more yellow, just everything. I'll link it down in the description box below, but it was really excellent. Once my paint is dry, I can spray down with some Mr. Super Clear and start blushing out the hands to match the body. Once I'm finished with all the blushing, I mask off all the fingers and I will give them a spray with some metallic spray paint. Bam! Shoddy fingers! I do some initial passes of weathering onto the fingers as well, doing some dry brushing of blacks and wiping away any excess. I paint her middle finger with a metallic purple. Then I apply some glue to the very tip of that claw and give it a dusting of a custom mix of blue and purple glitter. I have to say, even though these claws were such a pain in my butt, they turned out beautifully. I am super proud of how they look. I don't even notice the seams of where I've connected them to the original hand, and I'm just very pleased with the outcome. To pop her head onto her body, I am applying heat with my hair dryer to just the neck hole. I'm avoiding having heat directly run across her face. I'm angling it to keep it away. Then I push the prongs down on the neck peg and gently work the head back and forth being careful to not squeeze the head. The last thing to do is get her dressed. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and watching, and if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I did want to apologize for the long wait since my last video. This doll ran into quite a few speed bumps, so she's a little later coming out than intended. She was supposed to be out last week. I wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who has been commenting on my videos. I really love getting to read your comments. And I also love hearing all of your doll ideas, so please keep them coming down in the comments. I've added quite a few of your ideas to my I need to make that doll list. <laughs>